Xbox for Gaming is hitting the streets. China doesn't want Nvidia's graphics cards, but that's okay. Intel does. I don't know what's happening with ARC. Intel and Nvidia are dimming up. It's, the world's going crazy. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news like a find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Friday, September 19th, 2025. And let's get started with the news, which is the Xbox UI. That's supposed to be for the upcoming ROG Xbox Ally X handhelds. Bunch of letters and names together, put together. Anyways, the Xbox UI is supposed to be a tweaked version of Windows that allows you to get better performance because it does things like suppress background tasks, kills off Explorer and makes it so that you're using less RAM, which on a handheld situation is not easily upgradable. So you're gonna have more available for VRAM situations, which as we saw in the re review of our original Ally X, the 24 gigabytes of RAM on that console made it faster than the 16 gig version of the Ally, even though they technically had the same chip in them. So this is actually a pretty big deal, but people have been able to find a way to actually get it to work on non-Xbox Ally X handhelds. It's available for other handhelds out there right now. It does require you to be a Windows Insider, as well as tweak a few things in the registry and use a tool to make sure that it gets enabled, but it is possible to get it working on things that are not the Xbox Ally version handheld control game things. And it's not just performance improvements that it brings. It also has a new UI that allows you to navigate windows more easily just using the controllers. This could be good for anybody who's rocking something like an Ioneo or otherwise and doesn't want to switch over to something like Bazite or even potentially a SteamOS setup. It just brings more options to the people who actually want to stay on windows but use it on their handhelds. Let me know if you're going to be trying this out on your handheld sometime soon. I would be doing this if it weren't for my upcoming move. I don't have enough time to tinker with this kind of stuff stuff right now, but once we get settled in South Africa, hopefully this kind of stuff could be more of the, the content that we start working on here at UFD Tech. But one of the things that I want you to work on is checking out today's video sponsor. If you want the best of the best when it comes to pre-built systems, there's really only one option. Today's video sponsor, Falcon Northwest. Falcon Northwest was kind enough to provide the grand prize for our recent charity event in the form of this tiki right here, they're only four inch wide, small form factor PC that can hold up to a 5090. With 50 series and 9070 XTs in good supply, now is better time than ever to experience gaming on a Falcon Northwest PC. If you're not much of a gamer, but a professional in need of a powerhouse system, Falcon Northwest also supplies Threadripper 9000 series CPUs and Nvidia Blackwell RTX professional cards to blast through even the most demanding workflows. I put one in this Reese PC right here. That's the Falcon Northwest talent. I put my RTX Pro 6000 in there, swapped it out for a 5090. We're also giving that away as I'm getting ready to leave. But Falcon Northwest isn't going anywhere. They've been at this since they pioneered pre-built gaming PCs way back in 1992, and they still managed to provide cutting edge PCs to this day. So you know you're in good hands. Or wings, because it's Falcon. Get it? Grab yourself the best of the best in pre-built PCs from Falcon Northwest via the link in the description below. And as always, a huge thank you to Falcon Northwest for not only sponsoring our event or this video, but through the continued support throughout the years. Again, big thanks to Falcon Northwest. We are giving away these PCs right here. We've got this one, the top one, which is the grand prize provided by them. The bottom one's my personal PC that I put a 5090 in, has Reese's face on it. You could donate to the charity fundraiser, or you can come watch us over on twitch.tv forward slash UFD tech. Both are appreciated. Big thanks again, just uh, to the community as well. And Mr. Mark Zuckerberg probably wasn't saying thanks to the live demo team over at Meta because they unveiled their Meta Ray-Ban display glasses a couple days ago, which is their next step in augmented reality. These things are very similar to the Meta Ray-Bans that are currently out on the market. You can interact with them, they can record video, they can access AI and all the various things, but now they have a display built into the lenses themselves, which based on videos that I've seen doesn't appear to be very noticeable if you are the person outside of the glasses. They have a high res 600 by 600 display. You get up to six hours of use on it, and with the charging case, you get about 30 hours. It does include a neural band that you put on your wrist that your hand movements actually interact with the glasses. But in case you're wondering, what would you possibly need this heads up display for? As any good AI company would show off, live captioning, that's everybody needs that. It's important in all scenarios to make sure that you have written record of everything that's being said. You can interact with the AI, you can do messages and video calling, you can get a viewfinder for photos and videos, navigation for walking, and music controls are all baked into that. So this is 
an intriguing little concept that they're moving on from the original Meta Ray-Bans. I don't know that this is necessarily there in terms of uh, being mass adopted, but from the people I've read that have actually been able to play around with it, it does appear like it's a pretty decent experience, even if live demos didn't quite work during the Meta Connect event. But as you can see, based on this video, they're trying to showcase that it can do a whole lot that's just presented right in front of your face for $799, which I don't know if that's necessarily a price that's gonna sell very well, but it does show that Meta is continuing down this augmented virtual reality world that they think is super important. And that's why they changed their name to Meta instead of Facebook, because they want you to live in the metaverse. And while they're moving into the future, Steam is getting out of the past because they're announcing that they're gonna stop supporting 32-bit operating systems. So any Windows 32-bit is getting its support dropped by the end of this year, whether that's seven or 10 or any of the ones that are also losing regular support, you're not gonna be able to get any sort of support or update for Steam any longer. It doesn't mean that you can't use it if you are still on a 32-bit operating system for whatever reason. It just means that if anything goes wrong, uh, Valve is not going to provide you any sort of assistance in fixing that. But in case you are stuck in the past, you know you want 32-bit, Silverstone announcing that their FLP02 is coming out. This is something that we saw at Computex. This is the nostalgia tower that can fit modern hardware but is based on the beige colorway and the key locking and everything that you would expect from a normal old school computer. We've already shown off the FLP01, which was more of a HTPC form factor. This is more of a tower form factor. They haven't announced when exactly it's coming out and I think the price is also TBD, but people want the FLP02 and hopefully we're gonna be able to build in one sometime soon, which I'm gonna need to save money in order to afford the, the parts for that. So Reese, what do you have for me? Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. It's Friday, everyone, and here's your deals. Starting off, we have this Thermaltake Mjolnir Vision 360 ARGB AIO CP liquid cooler for only $73 and 42 cents making it 31 dollars and 48 cents off but the next up we have the apple mac mini m4 with a base model featuring 16 gigs of ram and 256 gigs of storage you can pick one up at micro center for only 449.99 making it 150 dollars off and then lastly we have another msrp warning with this asus prime geforce rtx 5070 ti going for only 749 dollars 99 cents at best buy and hey with that the deals are done you can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time i'm gonna hand you off back to bread for the rest of your hot news cheers thanks reese well, AMD is providing a deal of GPUs. They're announcing the new RX 7700 is going to hit the streets sometime soon. No price point, no release date, but this is going to be slightly below the 7700 XT and slightly above the 7600 XT. It's going to have 16 gigs of VRAM, be slightly slower, about 15 to 20% slower than the 7700 XT with its 2560 stream processors. Again, not much is known price point wise, and it's not quite clear where this is going to slot into the current market with things like the 90. 9060 XT being on the market, how that will compare to the 7700, but hopefully we find out in the coming days. And Nvidia found out that certain sectors of the Chinese economy do not want to be using their GPUs. With the Cyber States Administration of China telling companies like ByteDance and Alibaba that they have to end their testing and their orders of the RTX Pro 6000D, which is the GPU that was specifically designed to be shipped to China due to export restrictions from the US. Instead, opting to do things like in-country development of various different AI GPUs. Alibaba's already been making their own AI GPUs. ByteDance has been doing it. This is kind of just supposed to help accelerate that a little bit better. The CEO of NVIDIA saying, we can only be a service of a market if the country wants us to be. I'm disappointed with what I see, but they have larger agendas to work out between China and the US, and I'm understanding of that. We are patient about it. So it seems like they're not trying to burn bridges in case it happens that they could start selling GPUs back to China again. They're going to want to make sure that they're saying the right thing things now in order to make sure that they can make the money later. But none of that matters because the biggest bombshell that has happened in modern PC gaming and modern PCs of recent history is Nvidia and Intel officially collaborating. There's been reports talking about earlier how maybe Nvidia was looking at Intel's foundries to make some of their chips, but this goes well beyond that. Nvidia announcing that they're investing $5 billion into Intel to get about 4% of the company and that they're going to have a close partnership when it comes to their technology being 
fused together. So it's gonna happen in two different sectors. It's gonna be both in AI, but also in consumer regular desktop chips. So for the AI situation, NVLink is supposed to fuse together Intel CPUs with NVIDIA's AI chips to make it so that they are closer connected to have better synergy and fusing architectures together to make a better platform for the next era of computing. That's not something that's super unprecedented. It is kind of strange because NVIDIA has been working on developing their own CPUs based on the ARM licensure, but now it looks like they're gonna have a close partnership with Intel to instead work on that, which could potentially push AMD out of certain server markets, making it so that it's more Intel and NVIDIA wherever they go. But on top of that, let's talk about the things that are gonna affect regular old gamers like you and me, the Intel x86 architecture is gonna be fused with RTX GPUs. That has been the announcement that Intel CPUs, desktop CPUs, potentially mobile CPUs, will have integrated RTX graphics. The RTX GPU chiplets being put into the Intel CPUs, it is not quite clear what the ramifications will be of this moving forward. There's a whole bunch of things that you could potentially speculate about. Does this mean that ARC is effectively dead in the water? Will they keep going with discrete GPUs despite the limited sales and now they have this new path moving forward with Intel and Nvidia? Integrated GPUs on Intel was something that they were trying to catch up to AMD with, but they weren't quite there, but we started to see some progress, especially with things like Lunar Lake. However, RTX GPUs being baked into Intel CPUs could potentially unlock a new level of kind of low power or smaller form factor devices. Think gaming handhelds. This has been a market that AMD has absolutely dominated lately with their APUs. Intel and Nvidia teaming up could potentially unlock a whole new realm of various different gaming handhelds or small form factor PCs. And while this is a historic partnership that I did not see coming, it does uh, kind of create a situation where it feels like AMD is going to get edged out of the market a lot more than they currently already are. Nvidia already dominating when it comes to GPU sales, whether that's in the cloud computing sector, AI sector, or even the gaming sector. And now Intel is gonna be able to partner with Nvidia for the server side, which is something that they've been struggling in lately. And it seems like things might be changing for the two monopolies that people did not like in their various sectors are now working together and then gonna make it so that AMD is even more of the underdog in the various different regions that they've been competing in. I am very curious what this will look like in a few years from now. How is this gonna impact things like APUs and Intel and Nvidia APUs, gaming handhelds, small form factor stuff, potentially console-like experiences, but then also what does it look like for AMD and their future when in Intel and Nvidia are walking into every boardroom together trying to pitch each other and making it so that it's a, you get both of us. If you go with Nvidia, you get Intel. And this $5 billion investment's a little bit cheaper than what Nvidia wanted to do a few years ago. And you might remember that they tried to acquire ARM for $40 billion. That fell through due to regulation. And it turns out that this $5 billion investment is not quite falling apart the same way. And they're gonna get their x86 abilities through Intel directly, as opposed to trying to figure things out elsewise. Let me know what you think of this. This is a wild announcement. This is, this is pretty historic news. Again, we'll have to see what this looks like in the years to come, but I'm keen to hear what you think of it down below in the comments while I see what you had to say in last episode. Uh, we got Y, R, S, Y, a whole bunch of letters saying, I can't stand your voice and the pacing of your content makes me feel nauseous. But for some reason, I still watch your stuff. Thank you. Glad to have you around. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like you're glad to be around, but I'll uh, appreciate you being here as long as you'll have me, which is not anymore right now. Bye.